Greetings YouTubers, my name is PhD Tony and welcome to episode 1 of my new series, Idiotic Questions That Flurfs Ask. Today's question is, do you have any evidence that mass attracts mass? Anybody who cares about my mental well-being is going to point out that it is not good for me to talk to flat earthers because they are a complete waste of time and biomass. And this is entirely true, but I can't help but harbour the suspicion that if only they could be educated, they could be saved. So yes, I sometimes do end up in discussions with flat earthers, and I do try and educate them about how gravity works, because to my mind, this is the key element to understanding the nature of reality. But of course, flat earthers have a set of programmed responses to any such foray, the most basic of which is to argue that there is no evidence that mass attracts mass, that there are fundamental problems with the Shahelian and the Cavendish experiments, and that blows gravity out of the water. I have to confess up front that I find that particular question quite frustrating and annoying because of the conceptual framework on which it is based. In order to even ask that question, you need to think that every single physicist for the past 300 years has done nothing more than scratch their ass. None of them has considered trying to reproduce the results, doing it with more accurate machinery, trying to do it in different circumstances or on different length scales. Essentially, the question relies on the premise that every single scientist today and every scientist that has drawn breath over the past three centuries is so staggeringly stupid that they couldn't find their way out of a shower stall without assistance. It turns out that in reality, however, scientists are very enthusiastic about the concept of reproducibility, and great efforts have been made to establish whether or not the results of the Cavendish and Shahelian experiments remain valid in different circumstances, using different instrumental setups, using different experimental concepts. For those of you who have not yet succumbed to Pavlovian reflex and descended into a coma at the sound of my voice, first of all, congratulations. I can't help but admire your resilience. Second, you may have noticed a sequence of references appearing on screen. Each of these references describes a distinct investigation of the validity of Newton's law of gravitation. They use a variety of instruments and experimental setups, a variety of length scales and a variety of time scales. I'm not going to go into any particular detail about any individual study, because that's not my point. My point is that there have been a lot of studies of the validity of Newton's law of gravitation. And this is only a tiny subset. I have restricted myself here only to those studies that are based on laboratory or controlled conditions. I have excluded any field studies that have used Newton's law. So at a minimum, Anybody who wants to argue that Newton's law of gravitation is not accurate needs to invalidate each and every one of these confirmatory studies. And the good news for our FLIRF friends is that there is a set procedure by which this may be achieved. All they need to do is write a series of papers outlining the methodological flaws of all previous studies of gravity and explain why their version of gravity is vastly more persuasive and has more explanatory power. Having done that and got it past peer review and accepted by the majority of the scientific community, they can sit back and relax. Given their confidence in their own abilities, one can only surmise why it is that none of them have made the attempt. Unless, of course, deep down, all of them realise they're full of crap. Regardless, this particular presentation isn't meant to be educational so much as a resource that the community can use the next time a flat earther tries to use that particularly idiotic argument. Not just idiotic, but sinister. Because if an individual were really interested in the answer to these questions, what evidence is there that mass attracts mass, they could just as easily track down these references as I can. There's nothing magical about what I did. But instead of educating themselves, or getting educated by an expert in the field, they go around point scoring off average people. The reality is that the average person has no need to fully comprehend the technical detail of Newtonian gravity. When and where it is accurate, when and where it isn't, and how it has been verified. But the average person does not conclude on the basis of their personal ignorance that everybody is equally ignorant and there is no answer to these questions. I think that flat earthers would be well advised to approach the matter honestly and to accept answers that are given them rather than assume that no such answer exists because they aren't yet aware of it. Anyway, that might do us for today. I realise that this is something very different from the other content on my channel. Please let me know what you think of it in the comments below. 
Anyway, I hope it's been at least a little bit of fun and maybe a little bit useful as well. The next time you get asked by someone if you can point them to some references that demonstrate that mass attracts mass, you can now answer... Yes, I fucking can!